I met Molana when I was 15 years old and it was the look that he gave me um, that really captivated me um, because I had my head lowered and then next to it two hits of the staff and I looked up and his eyes were like swimming. When I made eye contact with him it felt like uh, it felt like a barcode scanner. I felt like he he knew everything about me um, and he gave me everything I needed to securely go on in the path that I was pursuing. He delivered this to his, his murids, to his followers in the perfect way. Everything what you need now for your life at this moment, every human being, what he needs for his life, for this and for the next life, you can find in the advice of Morana Sheikh Nazi. Everything. From childhood memories to moving encounters, many have shared their accounts of how he, Maulana Sheikh Nazim, Qadassalaw Siraziz, painstakingly revived prophetic traditions. Before you were sitting here, it's like the goldfish in your bowl, you know, and you tried it. Alhamdulillah, we uh, have this good uh, memory, good in our head, we still remember how we was going with him. Once we was traveling with him in this area of North West Syria, sometimes by jeep, sometimes by uh, donkey, sometimes walking, and it was Summer time, that's hot, and going through place so long and no tree, nothing, just field. And there was one, uh, Rahmatullah, he was named Abdul Qadir, he was from Ottoman uh, uh, soldier, he was well, Ottoman time, but he was older than my father that time. And we are going, and suddenly. I decide to not go. <laughs> child, I was 10 or 11 years old. I am tired, I don't want to go. Oh, my son, it's not so far, you can, we can walk a little bit. No, no, I want the donkey to. <laughs> One hour they try, after Alhamdulillah, <laughs> I was maybe, I finished, no tired more. I rest, so we continue. Something, many things like this uh, happen. I was uh, joking, we are sometimes making me, uh, teasing me. So, so, so it is real uh, nice memories with Maulana. I remember him back in the days of Peckham Mosque, bringing in large uh, saucepans of food. To, for, for everybody to eat uh, after breaking their fast. And I can clearly remember him sitting down along with everybody else, cross-legged, uh, eating food in the, in the sunnah fashion with his fingers and always looking after everybody, making sure they had enough to eat. But he was also very uh, keen. There was no food left over. He always uh, d didn't really like waste. In, the, in those days, Maulana was still eating uh, with the brothers. Um, and my dad said that it was his his habit when he he, he came down he'd go straight into the into the kitchen where the where the food was being prepared and he'd go straight to the dustbin and he'd take the lid off and be look be looking through the dustbin seeing what the seeing what the cook had been had been up to that day and uh, he would often take out a tomato that had been thrown away it's just one that you know any of us would would look at oh it's going rotten bin um, but he'd take it out and say ah half of this is rotten but half of it is good you should have cut it in half and used this half. And he'd be taking this out and putting it on the side. And he'd take out another one that was even worse. Kind of three quarters, three quarters bad, all going black. But there's a good bit on the corner. He says, right, cut that bit out. Put that in the dinner. He said that for every teaspoon of food, 40 angels had been involved in, in the preparation of that one teaspoon of food. And I remember getting repeatedly told about this by, by my dad. Because when as a small child, you know, not, not wanting to finish your dinner and... Uh, Get, getting told off for wasting food.
Sheikh Mehmet's visit to Scotland was a very blessed and very historic occasion. He was following in his father's footsteps. And he said some very kind things about the country and the people. And he said there was great spirituality in Scotland. <laughs> Allah, Allah, Allah. <laughs> I has this uh, sense of humor uh, thing, but he is from family also. Whole family, they have his brothers, uh, his father, grandfather. Also, they have this uh, sense of humor thing. I like to make people happy. Alhamdulillah. Every time we remember this, we are uh, happy. First met him in Peckham, then he asked me what do I do? And I said, I do acupuncture. He said, uh, happy puncture, because it makes people happy. And he endorsed it that I should carry on doing it and bring people to him. When we used to go to Cyprus, we could go into his house and the women particularly got the privilege of being able to go in and hang around in his house. And the first time that I really met him, we were all having breakfast with him and he'd just sit there and share out all the food and laughing and cracking jokes and reading the paper. And I was a vegetarian and he got his fork and just stuck it on his plate and got this big piece of like meat and handed it to me and I just took it and I ate it and I knew it was the best thing that I was never going to be a vegetarian again. One of the first things that come to mind is the children, you know, seeing the children running up to Sheikh Nazim, um, you know, and, and he'd always have a sweet <laughs> in his pocket that he, would, that, he, uh, that he would give to each child. In Malaysia, at one of um, the university, so a lot of people, probably 5,000 people by the pay, and um, Maulana was giving the sopa. Yeah, the the chutbah. The chutbah, sorry, the German, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he was speaking in Arabic and English. And then at the end, uh, when my dad was asking people, do you understand that? Because not all Malay are very good at um, English. And this guy said, Yes, his Malay was perfect. And apparently everyone here in their own language. And you're like, how could that be? That's so amazing. It is true to say that the legacy of Maulana's marvels continues to mystify and attract followers and non-followers to this very day. With Maulana, every moment is miracle. Yes. But you have to understand this miracle. As I say, fish doesn't understand inside inside the ocean doesn't understand the ocean. It is ocean. Yes. But only one thing, the miracle of Maulana is that he is uh, Mehmet Rashad Memo, known yes. as Memo. He was uh, baby six seven months and he he choked. He was started getting blue. Then I was just finished. I cry, start to cry and let him. My mother trying to help him, and he's making he's getting blue. And Subhanallah, uh, they just grabbed him and took him to Maulana. Maulana blow in his face, and said, you know, immediately stopped this his the the behavior of choking, and he slept. I was not happy. I, I wanted to go to doctor, so we had take him to doctor. Doctor said nothing. There is nothing in his lungs or anything. After that, Maulana came where we are. It was Sheikh Adnan's house. We came in Tripoli. He came, stand on in front of him. He was sleeping. He said, "Now he is my son." You know, because when a Sheikh or Aulia show open miracle, this thing is belong to him. 
So he said he's my son. And uh, when he becomes 18 years old, he will uh, carry me to my grave. And subhanallah. And I will be 90 years old that time. And 90 years old is enough for me to live. Subhanallah, when he's 18 years old, turned after one week, Maulana becoming very ill. You know, it was also a miracle for him that his heart, his lungs full of water and his heart, some, they say, they have expression in medical thing, but I don't know what that has, his heart is turned. The doctor came and said, you know, he was waiting all night and say 1% uh, only can survive this, this situation. He survived and lived two more years. And when uh, 20, Mohammed Rashad became 20, he was uh, also, he was, when a funeral, he was there. Yes, he he put, laid him in his grave. Yes. And it's not about religion at all. It's about spirituality, it's about love, it's about community, it's about treating each other with kindness. Therefore, it's a great pleasure and privilege for us at this Unitarian Chapel in Paris to welcome Sheikh Mehmet Adil, the global spiritual leader of the Naqshbandi Haqqani Sufi order. The minister, the Reverend Andrew Rowley, thought it would be a good idea to get Sheikh Nassim to come up to Padium. So I went with Andrew Rowley to London and we went to see Sheikh Nassim and we persuaded him to come to Padium. So about three months later, an entourage, probably 10, 12, 15 cars, arrived from London here, which was quite amazing really. And we were, we were buried by people uh, and also lots of Muslims came from different parts of the Northwest. And that was it, the beginning of the young Sufi community in this area because it dated exactly from that moment of time. So it's lovely, 21 years later, a sort of birthday party. We have uh, Sheikh Mohammed Adil coming here, the son of Sheikh Nazim. Well, I think the importance of the visit today by Sheikh Mehmed, like his father before, 21 years earlier, Sheikh Nazim, to our chapel, our Unitarian chapel here in Padium, has been that it has brought our two faiths, Islam and the Christian tradition from which we come, it has brought our two faiths together. Uh, not just to meet, but also to worship together. And that has been tremendously significant, both 21 years ago and today. It's important for our world, I think, because we live in a divided world with much hostility, suspicion between different faiths and between different peoples. And I think that by coming together for worship, we show what can be achieved, that people of different faiths are not that different. They follow different paths, but we worship the same God. And as we come together to worship that God, the message that our two faiths proclaim, peace, peace on earth, becomes clearer. And hopefully that message will ring out to the world. Amen. To speak about Hadrat Maulana Sheikh Nadim Qadisallahu Sallallahu is not easy because he is such a great man. But despite his greatness, he was also great in his humbleness. And this is a sign of the, his greatness, because he was able with all these maqams to be so humble and so close and so loving and caring for people. And he dedicated his life in service of the people. 
Muslims and non-Muslims. So, him, Allah, Ummat of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala wasallam. In his teachings and varying spiritual practices, which continue to spread across the globe through his successor, Maulana Sheikh Muhammad Adil, it is evident that Maulana Sheikh Nazim mirrored prophetic qualities with poignant resonance. <laughs> When uh, they go there, of course, they will uh, pray for him, and they will, uh, and it is as much they can pray. It will be for them also. Allah reward them, reward their ancestor, their family. So Allah give barakah for them also. This is only for sake of Allah going for us, Abdiya Allah. Love that is true So let your love light